Hi everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and today I'm back from my Little Adventure in Seasons by Hannah Carlson with my Castle Arts pencils which I gave a second chance and I've been kind of exploring them a little bit. I'm looking forward to this today. I'm actually filming this on a Sunday which is quite unusual for me but I really wanted to and uh, I'm, I'm kind of getting into the, uh, the, the the Halloween spirit a little bit. It's not something that we normally bother with. As you can see, I've finished this outline and we're going around with the grey pencil. One of the things I like about the Castle Arts pencil is there's a huge range of these sort of yellows into oranges and then into the, the sort of light reds and obviously doing things like pumpkins, that's really helpful. But I'm going to start with Naples yellow which is, is more orange than yellow but it's very very pale and I'm going to use that as my base layer for these two pumpkins. Pip's got a new toy, uh, it's actually not a new toy, we've actually got one already um, but I bought another one so that her and Jock have got one each and they're, they're long windy snakes made of rubber but they've got a squeaker in the head and we normally don't allow squeaky toys in this house but the, the dogs really like the other one and they took the squeaker out of it quite quickly so I was confident that if I bought another one the same thing would happen but unfortunately the squeaker is still in it and I can hear Pip like she's like waggling it about and it's battering off the furniture in the other room <laughs> but she's having fun so that's okay so unimaginatively, um, it's, as I say, as a snake, so when we ask the dogs to bring us that specific toy, we call it Snakey. And we say to Pip, have you got Snakey? So this is Snakey the second. I think we'll have to give him another name. <laughs> so just a slight layer down. This is, I start every colouring item, page, whatever, the same way. And I just put a light layer of my, my beginner colour down. So not very much pressure on the pencil at all. Let me just go for it. I mean, you can barely see it, but it just takes away the white, or in this case, the cream colour of the paper. And then we can start to build up on top of that. So next I'm going to go to Marigold, which is this colour here. So we're heading deeper into orange territory now. And when I'm going down with this second layer, I want to think about light sources. So just because of our radishy things, I thank you for all your suggestions, by the way, on this. Uh, someone suggested Rosehip. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, but uh, yeah, I'm really pleased with the way it turned out, but anyway, uh, the light source seems to be coming from slightly the viewer's point of view, but over this way a little bit, so we're going to try and mimic that as well with our, with our pumpkins, so I'm thinking the lightest patches are going to be around this area, and then probably on this very edge here and maybe here, so we've got to think about that, so... Again, kind of like I did up here, I'm following Hannah's lines that she's left. And that's the kind of motion, that's the stroke I'm using with, with my pencil. And we're very gradually just going to start to build up this colour because we do want to have a really rich sort of reddish orange in some places. But around this area, we're going to play it safe, take it easy. Again, we're not pressing hard here at all. And we can start to bring this down. All the way around here and then underneath here so take a bit more care under here because this this isn't going to have much light hitting it so the color is going to be a bit more substantial in that little tucked in part there we squished in bit and again to help show the curve of the pumpkin if we have it darker underneath that will denote that the lights not hitting it quite as directly and that gives that illusion of its curving underneath and when we get over here, again, the same thing as we were doing under here, a little bit more of a block colour. So I've actually only left a rather small area that just has the Naples yellow on it. And that's obviously going to be the brightest part of the highlight. So I'm cutting into that with this marigold colour because that's going to be the sort of outer edge of the highlight area. You know, kind of like a, like a halo around it or an aura around it. And then we'll use our more true oranges to build up the actual colour of the, the rest of the, the pumpkin. So we're thinking about down here. If we think about where the light's hitting that, it's going to be a bit further over. It's going to be maybe around here. So we're going to do the same thing, but just slightly further to the right. Um, next, we are going to go to Cadmium Orange Deep. So it's this one here. So we're really getting into proper orange now. And I would say this is where the work starts, really. And for this first part, I'm going to start working around the highlight and really and really develop this highlight. So 
start in this corner and make that quite rich. As I say, I like to I usually like to work the darkest to lightest, especially when I'm trying to form highlights. So we're going to go cautiously here, but we're going to build that up underneath there. And then we can do the same up here as well. So try and keep, keep your strokes on the same trajectory as Hannah's lines. And in this section, we start to bring these a bit further up as we head away from that light source. There's going to be some lines coming up to meet that there. So they're always joining together, the top and the bottom parts here. And then when we come around to this side, this is going to be much more solid. Okay, so that's the basis for my highlight on this one. So we're just going to work on that. Now, not using any new pencils. I'm just sticking to the ones that I was using before. So I'm going back to the marigold, which was the middle colour. It was like the mid-tone. And I'm going to start joining that up with the darker orange that we've used. Just that same motion. And I'm taking care to avoid this part in the middle here as well. Now we're going to bring in one more colour and I'm going to make it terracotta. I may want to go a little bit darker than this, but the place to try this out is in in these little nooks and crannies. So if it doesn't look quite right, you can, you know, you can change your mind and it'll be okay. I just want to see how this goes down. Yeah. So if I just do this tiny little bit here. Okay, so you can see how rich that is down there. So I just want to start incorporating this as well on the very peripheral areas. That's a good word for a Sunday for me, isn't it? I know this is Thursday that you're watching it, but a Sunday for me. Quite impressed with my little brain this morning. I tell you, it's been a long week. <laughs> it has been a long week. So I'm quite happy that that's going to be... And I'm going to employ this in the bit that's tucked in behind, so around the back of this pumpkin. I'm just going to fill that in solidly. Again, not pressing that hard, but we're going to do a little bit more to that afterwards. We'll leave that till the end, though. And here as well. So just the same technique, but shorter strokes because we want to keep the bulk of the colour at the top and the bottom because the, the light's hitting in the middle. But you can see how much that... I was going to say that shadow. No, Gem, it's not a shadow. It's the opposite. You can see how much that highlight's starting to pop out now and build up. And that's kind of what we want. Okay, so now I can jump between the four. I won't be going back to the Naples yellow, which was the lightest one. That's that's not going to be needed now. But between the three colours that we used after that, I'm going to jump back and forth. And this is really just me uh, getting the highlight the way I want it. Uh, and that's kind of down to preference, to be honest. <laughs> you can be as fussy as you like with your highlight. So I just want to build up some of my terracotta now. Okay, so I'm fairly satisfied with the highlight here, so I'm going to start working on this middle section and making that a little bit richer. Back to the marigold, which was the second pencil that I used. And I'm going to kind of almost block that in now, so cover what's left of the, the paper showing through with that. And when I'm putting this down, I'm still using these up and down strokes because it matches the the texture and the contours of the pumpkin. Now again, this doesn't have to be perfectly uniform and even it is a, an organic object. Therefore, it's going to have flaws. It's going to have slightly uneven patches in it. And I, I think that's kind of like half the fun of colouring and drawing things like this because you've got that little bit of wiggle room. And what that's doing is letting that highlight really pop out. So that's excellent. Onto the cadmium orange. I was really interested to hear all your comments about your own experiences with these castle art pencils. And there was a lot of you saying the same thing that matched up with the problem that I was having. When I first tried these out, it was in a Johanna Basford book. And Johanna Basford's books have excellent paper quality. But these pencils, they just didn't seem that happy on that particular paper. And I'm having a completely different experience in this Hannah Carlson book. It's, it's like using two different sets of pencils. And I was really glad to hear that a lot of you said that you felt that these pencils were quite paper dependent. So that made me that made me feel pretty pretty good, pretty um, you know, vindicated. <laughs> I thought it was maybe just me being a bit too picky because, you know, sometimes, I, you know, because I review a lot of stuff, you can you can be a little bit harsh sometimes and you don't even realise you're doing it. But a lot of you have agreed. So I really, really enjoyed reading through your comments about that. And it seems that most of you quite like these pencils and appreciate the, the quality of them for their price point and, you know, where they sit in the sort of the scale of pencils, so to speak. Um, so that was that was really good to hear. And I do, honestly, I think these pencils are worth a go if you don't want to spend mega money or maybe you just want a full set of colours 
that are affordable while you build up a, maybe like a, a larger selection of artist grade pencils. These are a great choice, they really are. I don't know whether I like them more than the Arteza pencils. I haven't used them enough to really, you know, to really make a decision on that. And I think that would be pretty unfair at this stage. But I, I'm really enjoying them. But I think the thing for me is if they're going to be fussy about paper, that's not something you really want if it's going to be you know, a main set of pencils that you use and you want them to be able to use them in a variety of places. Okay, so this might sound a bit crazy, but bear with me. I, I want need to explain myself here. I want a shadow colour for this pumpkin and I'm going to pick purple. Now, that doesn't necessarily sound like any sort of good idea, but if I just show you my colour wheel... So this is a, it's actually a quilter's colour wheel I've got here. Um, if you don't own a colour wheel and your colour theory isn't absolutely exemplary, I highly recommend having one of these. Uh, I still use it now, um, even though I've been colouring for quite a long time and I'm learning a lot about what goes with what. But one of the things you can do if you want a shadow colour is if you go to the opposite colour on the colour wheel. So in this case... We're into sort of a dark orange down here. So if I take this little this little selection here and I go directly across, that goes into blue. And if I come more orangey, you know, yellow into orange, so this one here, then that's taking me into purple and it's a dark purple. So what I want to do is try and find this sort of colour. And I've got this, um, this, ultramarine, this ultramarine violet, so that is like a bluish purple. And I think that's a fairly good match. So if I take that ultramarine violet to use as a shadow colour, it's going to give us a really good contrast and it's going to bring something to the picture. Now we're not going to go ham with this, so no, no, don't panic, don't panic. I do have some colour wheels for sale in the stash shop. They're, they're more compact than this and they're actually um, a bit more comprehensive. They're double-sided. So if that's something you're interested in, I mean, they're fairly cheap and obviously they're cheap on um, shipping costs as well because they're flat. So if it's something you fancy, you can go and check that out um, in the stash shop. They're, they're, it's one of those items that I've always got in stock. So there's no rush either. Okay, so when I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about the furthest away point from the light source, which is going to be up around here where this one tucks in behind this little guy in the front. And I am literally very, 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 very gently just going to add in some flicky lines there. And we can build it up as we see fit. I got into trouble. Someone, uh, one of my friends was watching... <laughs> some of my YouTube videos and she gave me into trouble for not forming my T's correctly because that's something that Scottish people are very guilty of. We, we drop a lot of our T's and I'm going to do the same at the top here. Uh, I'm making sure I've got quite a pointy point for this. This is definitely a less is more situation and you can see there that's just brought in some lovely shadow and we can maybe put a tiny bit in here. This is more of a suggestion than anything else though. So you can see the difference that makes. And also in here as well, and at this stock, if we put a dark, you know, if we if we press quite hard and then graduate that out and feather it out into the orange, just in at the very base where that stock is, that helps to give the illusion that that pumpkin's tucked in towards the stem. It's it's so subtle, but it just it just gives you that extra something in your picture. Now, if you prefer a, a smoother look, you can go back with one of your oranges now, and you can uh, you can blend out some of your your shadow lines. You know, you can blend it together. You do have to be careful with that though, because it can end up looking really muddy. So I would say go cautiously with that, but that is an option for you. And I'm just going to pop a little bit down in here as well. And again, I'm not using flicky lines. This is really the cast shadow of part of this pumpkin because it will be cast in something, although the light's coming from this direction because this one's in front of this one and we established that this light source, although it's coming from this right-hand side, it's probably angled up more towards where our eyes are. So that is going to cast a little bit of a shadow on the, the, the pumpkin behind. And I'll maybe flick a few lines in here again just very very gently and again you can do the same at the top where this curves in the way like this very short lines and I would space them out as well and then I'm going to take that darkest pencil again which was my terracotta and I'm just going to flick in some more to blend those lines out because they are standing a little bit and they look quite blue just helps to sort of smooth them out a little bit so again, just going with uh, with Hannah's texture lines here, you want a really sharp point for this. So sharpen up my terracotta here. And I'm going to follow some of our lines, uh, you know, the actual line work. And I'm going to press quite heavily. And you can see I've just added in 
that little extra line there. And that's really to show the imperfections and the fact that there's, you know, it's not going to be a completely smooth pumpkin. Well, it might be if it's really lucky. Maybe that's a life ambition that pumpkins wish to fulfill. <laughs> I don't know. But if you want to add in a few of those lines on your own, then by all means, feel free. So now that I've added that shadow colour, I'm feeling that this looks really, really washed out. So I'm going to go back in with my Naples yellow. So that was my lightest colour. And I'm going to go over that palest patch, you know, that highlight again, because I feel that it's too stark. So if I just do that and then I can take a wee look and now I'm thinking to myself, yeah, it's still not orange enough. So we can go to our next pencil up, which is our marigold, if you remember. And starting about, you know, like I'm midway down, again, just as I did at the start, I'm cutting into that highlight area just to make it less stark. Because pumpkins, although they're quite smooth, they're not that shiny. So unless there was a really strong direct light source that was really, really close to it, and I'm happy where the highlight's sitting as well. So we'll work away on the on the baby pumpkin now as well and we'll get that all nice and coloured in the same as our same as its big brother over there. So just the same process again. So we'll start with this marigold. The highlight's going to be in a slightly different place. It's going to be touching this edge and it's going to be a little bit higher up. So if I bring that up there. Okay, let's grab the cadmium orange deep. And again, just because I like to start with the darkest parts, just all the time following the line work, that the line work's there to help you, that's what it's for. It's like little signposts all over your picture, telling you what direction to put your pencils in. Obviously, if you don't want to do that, you don't have to do that. No one's saying that, that you have to do it that way. But I think it's really nice to have that there, instead of having to, you know, work it all out for yourself. Because sometimes my brain doesn't want to do things like that. I don't know about you guys, but when, especially when I'm colouring, I don't want to have to think too much. I just want to make it look pretty. That's, that's the aim of the game. If this had been more of a standalone image, I would have made these pumpkins different colours. You know, would have made them slightly different um, hues, maybe made one more like a cream colour or maybe more greenish. But just because there's loads of other stuff going on in the picture, that's why I want to keep them the same. And plus as well, I wanted to show you guys a, a really nice way to colour in pumpkins because I know a lot of you will be into colouring, you know, sort of Halloween pictures, that kind of thing. So I thought this would be quite relevant just now as well. And this is a really nice way to do it because it's part of the bigger picture, obviously, but it's nice to be able to focus on one thing. Then again, same as before, when I'm getting to this point, so I'm way past where that highlight is, I'm bringing these strokes much further into the middle and they're, you know, they're joining up and that's going to give us that richer colour of the slightly darker shades that we're using. So again, I'm going to work on this highlight area first, so on this right hand side, and then I'll, I'll do more over here once, I've, uh, once I'm happy with this. And then I can, I get, I can get a bit more... Um, flicky happy here. <laughs> so as we established before, you can now see the difference between this highlight and this highlight. This is really white and it's just a bit too, it's a bit too stark. So back with that Naples yellow, so that was the very pale, was it Naples yellow? Yeah, that's what it was called. Just going back over, so it's literally just a layer or two, but I'm, you know, I'm using that flicky motion until you feel it's kind of matching what's going on in your lightest part here. And then I can start building up, you know, stepping up through the, the colour range again. So I've got marigold. And see, cutting into that, that highlight. And then it's just a case of building up the richness of the colour on the curved parts, on the bottom and the top. Again, tend to favour this left-hand side as we head round to the, the, the dark side of the moon, the dark side of the pumpkin. Now again, the trick to this is if you want to get multiple layers like this, especially with a softer pencil, don't press hard because if you press hard you're smooshing that pigment into the paper and if you think of the paper as um as like the tooth of the paper is basically lots of little peaks and troughs like this so in these little v shapes that are in the paper you're smooshing the pigment down in and you're also pressing down the top part of these peaks which is flattening the paper so if you press hard early on you're not having that chance to build up any layers because the paper can't actually grip the pigment that's coming off the pencil I'm just going to nip back to the marigold here because I want some more of that in here. Again, I'm just sort of, I'm hunting down those uh, little white bits of the paper that are poking through now. Okay, now we'll get to the business end of the rest of this pumpkin. So, cadmium orange first. And with this cadmium orange, I'm actually going into this segment, so I'm actually cutting into that highlight. And it's just because I don't want the highlight to stop dead where that black line is because it looks a wee bit unnatural. Just add a little bit of that in and then I can work the marigold round it a wee bit more. And don't forget this bit in at the back here as well. 
Now, when you get to this sort of stage where you have covered the paper, you've got your highlight, you've got your darker side, it's up to you where you want to stop. And that's something that just comes with practice because it's a combination of what actually looks right in inverted commas, but also what your preference is as the, as the colorist, as the person in control. So that might take a wee bit of time if you're a newer colorist, but that's completely okay. So don't panic or stress yourself about things like that. Okay, so pressing a bit harder now because I'm getting to the point where I can't get much more down on the paper here. So we'll pop some of that in there. I mean that there there may be some light catching that there, so we don't want to you know, we don't want to darken it out too much. But the chances are that this part around here especially is going to be quite dark. And then when we're coming to this front section again, as before, this is where we keep the lines much shorter. Space them out a little bit more. And again, here there's not going to be much in the way of that. So if you keep them to, you know, a minimum there. Okay, the only part I'm unhappy about is this part here. This looks really, really light. As if there's like a secondary light source. So I'm going to grab my terracotta here. And I'm just going to work my way over that area. That was like an, an accidental highlighted bit, wasn't it? So that's looking quite nice. You can see how well the grey outline that I've done is facilitating these shapes though. It just takes that sort of hard edge off them and makes them look a little bit more organic and a bit softer. And that's why I like to use it. It also helps to not delete the, the black line work. Obviously you can still see it, but it just makes it a little bit less obvious as well, which I always think is really nice as well. So we're going to work on these stalks. Now I want to use different greens than I've used here because the stalks kind of greeny into browny colours. So I'll put the green gold down first. Now we're working in quite a small area and I, I say this every time, don't I? If you're working in a small area, don't fret too much and don't micro focus uh, because it's not really that important, truthfully. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get this green gold down. I'm being a little bit more careful here, although it's still a light layer. Oh, that's such a good colour with her pumpkin. And I think just down at the base with this raw umber, I'm just going to put in a little a little hint of this just down in here. So again, still using that flicky motion. But we'll put a couple of layers of that down and make it a solid colour. And then we can bring some of the these lines up again, just, to, just along with Hannah's lines that she's done, because she has left a little bit of detail there. And then we can liven up our green gold by putting down another couple of layers as well. So I'm trying to avoid my umber strokes there because I don't want really to blend them together. I want those to stand out. So I'm just kind of picking in between. Now you are going to get a degree of blending, which is fine because that's going to make it look a little bit more organic. And we'll do the same over here on this other one. So there you have it. There is a way for you to colour some pumpkins to get you into the trick or treat stroke Halloween spirit. I hope you found this helpful today. I'd love to hear in the comments if this is the type of thing that you would actually go out and use. You know, is this practical? Is it useful to you? Um, please let me know in the comments. That would be that would be lovely. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I've had a really nice morning doing this and I'm pleased with the way that this has turned out. I think next time when we come back, I'm going to avoid this stone because I want to wait and see what other colours I'm going to use in the you know, in the, the more sort of natural elements of the picture before I tackle the stones because we can pretty much make these any colour we want. So I think we'll leave those for now. We'll maybe do our turnipy swede type thing next time and possibly something else as well. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for coming hanging out with me. As always, if you want to stick a like on the video, that would be absolutely amazing. And I will see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video. So have a great day, everyone, and bye for now.